Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Earlier in the week, I headed over to Blackpool, which is about an hour from where I live. For those of you not familiar with Blackpool, it's like Las Vegas by the sea, but without the money. It is, though, an absolutely great location for photography, and I always enjoy visiting. One thing that I would say about Blackpool is it's got some of the best light you ever see anywhere in the world. This image is one that may not look particularly spectacular, but we're going to edit it and we're going to turn it into this. I'm going to show you all the stages and the tools we're going to be using are Lightroom and the Nick Collection. Now, if you're not familiar with the Nick Collection, it's currently a free collection of tools. It was originally owned by a company called Nick, who were then bought out by Google, who recently sold the assets over to DxO. And DxO are working on a new version. You can still get the free version of the Nick collection if you contact DxO, and they have got a page on their website where you can request the link by email. If you haven't got the free Nick collection, I really would urge you to go and get it now, because once they bring out the new version, you're not going to be able to get it for free. Let's dive into this image and I'll show you exactly how I go about editing it and all the stages. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is what I always do with images like this, is I actually change the camera calibration in Lightroom. So by default, you've got Adobe Standard. I'm going to pick one of the others. Because this was shot with a Fuji X-T2, I've got all these Fuji profiles that I can pick from. And I know from my experience that the Camera Pro Neg high and standard are very good in terms of producing lifelike colors. And even though this is going to be black and white, I still want to start with a good color balance. Because this image is going to be all about contrast and light, I'm going to pick the high contrast version of Camera Pro Neg. And the next thing I'm going to do is change just some saturations to improve the saturation of the image. And that's because the Camera Pro Neg profile is actually very low saturation. So I'm happy with that now. I'm now going to go and crop the image because I don't want this area down here actually in the frame. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. The top part of the framing's absolutely as I want it. I can see light coming in here and shafts of light coming down, although at the moment they're very faint. And I do want to just exclude some of this area down here with the birds and the seawall so that we can see this water just snaking away into the distance from the lower part of the frame. And I'm going to adjust next my basic exposures because at the moment we're getting clipping in the histogram. You can see where the clipping is. I'm not too worried about that, but when we do some of the later processing, it's going to make it look a little bit worse. So I'm going to just lower the contrast down. I'm going to lower down the exposure very slightly because I usually shoot with what we call exposing to the right. So I always overexpose very slightly. The other thing I should say is I'd normally shoot with a filter on the camera, a neutral density graduate. And I didn't in this case, I didn't actually have anything with me like that. The next thing I'm going to do is just reduce the highlights slightly, but I'm going to then up the whites because that will give me a better contrast. And then finally, I'm just going to increase the clarity because we want a bit of mid-tone contrast in there. I'm happy with now those basic adjustments. And I'm going to go down and I'm now going to show you the detail for the sharpening. So at the moment, that's quite a good sharp image from a kit lens. I'm going to reduce down the color noise reduction because that tends to add a slight blurring effect in Lightroom to the areas and sometimes it can cause a bit of color bleed. And I'm going to then increase very slightly the amount of sharpening, increase the detail. I'm going to reduce the radius as well. And I'm just going to increase the masking until I see the noise falling away. So I'm happy with that. And the next thing I'm going to do is just go to the tone curve and here I want to darken the image slightly but I don't want to lose the highlights so that's looking quite nice and then finally I'm just going to add in the effects I'm just going to try to add a little bit of dehaze 
because that will really sort of emphasize the contrast of things like the wheel against the background and also the pier against the light areas. So the image is now looking quite okay um, in terms of what I'd planned. Now I could add a graduate filter to the sky. So let's try that and we'll see if that makes an improvement onto the sky. So we'll just put on the mask so you can see the area that I'm selecting. And I'm going to actually graduate that quite a lot. I'm also going to use the luminance range masking option because this is uh, Lightroom Creative Cloud 2017 that I'm using. And I'm just going to remove that from the, the darkest areas. So I'm only going to be affecting this brightest tones, so from 50% up to 100% of brightness. And I'm just going to reduce the smoothing very slightly so that we don't get too much bleed. Okay, I'm happy with that. And now I can boost the contrast in the sky. I can reduce the highlights slightly, but push up the whites. Now, that's actually causing this area here to blow out. So I'm going to reduce the contrast a little bit. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep quite a low contrast there. And we don't have much effect on the shadows at all because of the luminosity masking that we've applied. So that looks like it makes a reasonable amount of difference. I'm happy with that. Click done. And now we can move over into using the Knit collection. And I'm going to use that in Photoshop. So I'll just right click and I'll choose to edit in Photoshop. Here we are now in Photoshop. I've got my Knit collection selective tool over here, which is where I can launch the Knit collection filters from. On the right side, you can also see my layers window and my channels window. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my layer. And I'm going to create the, um, or convert it to, for use with smart filters. And the reason I do this is so that when I use the Nick collection filters on this, it will allow me to go back in later and adjust them further if I need to. So the first filter I'm going to use is Viveza. I'm going to use that for controlling the light in the image so that we can create contrast. And my idea is that I want to enhance some of these shafts of light that are coming through in the sky. So the first thing you see there is just a warning that I'm editing in a smart object. We now have the image open. So I'm going to actually increase the saturation just very slightly and also the warmth very, very slightly. And I'm now going to select one of these areas. Now I'm using control point. I'm holding down the shift key and that shows me what's selected. And I want to limit the selection to this bright area here. And all I'm going to do is increase the contrast there and increase the structure. And I'm going to reduce the shadows slightly and just increase the brightness. I'm now going to hold down my Alt key and that means I can click and drag a copy of that control point with the same adjustment onto another of these bright areas. And again click and drag and drop it onto a new area and click and drag and drop it onto a new area and again another one there We've got one area up here and just there as well. So I'm happy there. And I'm just so I can control those control points a little bit better. All I'm doing here is holding down my shift key and selecting all of them. And then I'm going to group them together. So those are now one group you can see here. And any adjustments I make to one of these um, control point handles it will adjust the rest of them and also because I've got the control point selected I can make further adjustments over on this side here as well. Next thing I want to do is apply some adjustments to this area here of the water which I'd like to 
enhance slightly. It looks a little bit dull at the moment. So there's my selection, holding down the control key again. I can increase the brightness, I can increase the contrast, and I can also increase the structure. Yes, the areas are blowing out here and here, but that's helping the contrast against the, the pier. Let's now add in some selection to the sand. And those areas are quite dark at the moment, and I just want to lift the shadows and increase the contrast slightly. That's a little bit too, too light. We'll add in a little bit of structure there, and also more saturation and a little bit of warmth. Only a little bit though. Let's compare the image to how it was previously. So overall, that's a very slight improvement, but now you can see that the shafts of light are a bit more obvious. And the foreground appears a little bit more balanced. So when we convert to black and white later, hopefully it will look better. So I can now click OK. And I'm back in Photoshop. The next filter I'm going to use is Nick Silver Effects Pro. And this is what will do the conversion into black and white. Now normally I like to look down these presets down the left hand side of the screen just to pick any that catch my, my eye. But with this image I'm quite clear on what I want to do. So it's really about converting, darkening the sky, making these shafts of light stand out more, improving the contrast and making sure that we can still see the detail in the pier set against the background. The first thing I'm going to do is actually apply a colour filter. And these are very similar to the colour filters you apply when you're shooting black and white film. So if I apply a yellow filter, it will make things that have a yellow tint to them, such as the sand, appear slightly lighter, whilst the opposite side of the colour wheel, so something that's blue for example, that will start to get a bit darker. So there you can see immediately the sky became a bit darker, the sand became a bit lighter, and I can adjust the strength as well. The other thing I can do is also change the sensitivity of the image using different colours. What that does is if I move the blue you can see it darkens the sky or lightens the sky. Now I'm not going to use them yet. What I'm going to do is use the tonal and structural and contrast adjustments here before I actually move on to those colour channels because they will help refine our image afterwards. One of the things I like is the image giving a feeling of darkness and contrast and I'm going to actually improve that using the dynamic brightness just to reduce that. And I'm also going to increase the soft contrast because that gives a nice soft feel to the light in the image. So if I just move that back, you can see what I mean. Watch the clouds here and watch what happens as I increase the soft contrast. It gives it a sort of a, a nice glowing ethereal effect and we'll look to enhance that shortly a bit further. The other thing you can do is amplify the whites, which will lighten some of the dark areas. I'm also going to, before I go any further, I'm going to protect some of the shadows and also protect the highlights from blowing out too much further. And you can also amplify blacks if you want to, which will darken things like the, the sky. But I don't want to go too dark on that because I can see the, at the moment, I can see the big wheel here set against the sky and I don't want to lose that. I like the, the look of the shaft of light reflecting off the, off the wheel. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of contrast into the scene. It doesn't need very much. And I'm also going to add some mid-tone structure because that helps just bring out these shafts of light a little bit further. Let's have a look at the highlights. Okay, I've, I think the highlight makes it look a bit too coarse. So I'm going to reduce the highlight structure down. I'm also going to reduce the fine structure because I find that actually 
can cause a lot of artifacts in very fine details in the image. So I'm actually I'm quite liking the effect I've got on screen at the moment. So I'm now going to come back down to this tone curve and I'm going to use that to target some of the adjustments. I just want to darken the mid-tone slightly but also lighten the highlights which will affect these areas which have the shafts of light in them. And now let's look at moving each of the sliders left and right. So I actually quite like a slightly lighter sky at the moment and cyan's not having much of an effect. Yellow will have. So you can see there I'm going to use it to darken this area here and this area and also this area and red's not having an effect and I don't think violet will either. No. Okay so I'm now happy with my overall global adjustments. I'm going to apply a control point to here and I'm just using that to select this area of the sand in the center. And now I'll apply an adjustment to improve the contrast there because I want that to attract the viewer's attention. I'm going to amplify the white slightly and I'm also going to increase the the brightness in that area. And over here I'm going to darken, I'll just show you where that control point is, I'm going to darken the sand around here and the reason I'm going to do that is to give it more contrast against the the light here. Now as I'm doing that I can see that I'm affecting this building a bit too much here so I want to select that and we'll make some specific adjustments. Improve the contrast and I improve the whites on it and just brighten it up a little bit because there's a shaft of light coming down here and I want it to appear that it's hitting this area. So that's now looking quite good. I think I will add in a little bit of lightness in the area just behind the wheel. So we'll lighten that up a bit with brightness and contrast structure a little bit of the auto white so that makes the wheel stand out further against the sky so i'm happy with that let's now apply a vignette to finish off and we'll use just one of the basic lens fall off vignettes it's a very soft subtle one in fact it's not quite subtle enough so i'm happy to change that further i'm also going to place the center of that around here and that makes a, a nicer view of the pier at this end because it was getting a bit too dark. The other thing I'm going to do is apply a darkening effect to the sky at the top and I'm going to use the burn edges to do that. So I'm just going to push up the, the strength quite uh, significantly there so I can see it easily. I'm then going to use this size adjuster to see the area I'm covering and I'll reduce that now back down and now I can increase the transition so I can see there that's that's looking quite good now let's compare that to our original so that was the original image we brought into the silver effects pro that's the adjusted image the only thing perhaps that I would like to see is this area here needs to be a bit lighter so I'm going to use a control point to select that Okay, that looks like a good selection. And I'm just going to brighten it up very slightly. 
add a bit more contrast there and a little bit of structure and that tends to make the area stand out more and I'll just use the auto whites a little bit there you can see the effect of that control point I'm happy with that so I'm now going to click OK we're back in Photoshop and there's still one further filter that I want to apply to this image. It's looking good, but it's not quite how I imagined it. So the filter we're going to apply is actually Color Effects Pro. Now you may have been wondering why I didn't add any film grain, and that's because I actually wanted to add it in this filter. The reason I do that is it's actually quite a nice effect that you can get with the film grain here. I feel it's a, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's just, it's just different to what you can apply in Silver Effects Pro. So I'm gonna zoom in and pick an area here. You can see that's really strong in terms of grain effect to start with. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the grain just that little bit smaller. And I'm also gonna make it softer as well because it's quite harsh. I'm also going to reduce this film contrast down because that tends to make the image quite contrasty. So we'll soften that a little bit further, make it a little bit smaller. Now the final filter that I really want to add to this is the Glamour Glow. And that's going to really give the image a nice soft effect so you can see here with and without it. And it just adds something and makes you feel that there's sort of a misty haze in the image. The other thing you can do with the Glamour Glow that some people aren't aware of is you can use it to warm or cool your image in terms of image tones. And it actually gives quite a nice effect. So I'm going to actually add a small amount of warmth to the image. And I'm going to boost the glowing effect so that it's a bit too strong and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to apply the effect very subtly to these areas. Now when I did that you probably noticed that the area now that's been selected by this control point is actually where the glamour glow is being applied to at full strength so I'm just going to increase that and we now have the Glamour Glow applied to these areas that are very light, but not to the other areas. And when I did that, it also hid this warming effect. And I'll show you how we'll get that back in a minute. But if I really push that up, you can see it's only being applied selectively. So that's the starting effect that we've got, and it's now applied to these. I could hold down my Alt key and just make a further selection up here. And also down here to soften the area and that's actually looking quite nice now but I do want some of this softening applied to other areas of the image as well and the way I can do that is using this opacity slider so at the moment that's set to zero which means everywhere except for the areas the control points have selected has the effect hidden as I push it up it applies it to the rest of the image and so I can actually reduce it down to an area or to a level that I feel comfortable with for the rest of the image. And that means I can add in then more of that effect in some areas and I can also then still add back in my toning effect as well. So let's look at that just the glamour glow effect. So if I toggle it off toggle it on you can see the effect it's having on the image and actually that's quite strong so I'm just going to reduce it a little bit further and let's compare it overall so that was the starting image we brought in that's the image adjusted I know it's very very stylized but that was the effect that I was going for so I'll click OK we're back in Photoshop if I compare the Starting image now to the finished image, you can see we've made a substantial improvement and change. 
I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to share the video and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon. Thank you.